Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Happy Martian Dragon Hammercast. Uh, I am Drake Spirit, and once again, I'm joined by my good friend, Ockhammer. Hello. And uh, we have a special treat for you. Uh, this is the fourth round uh, of four at an Archon event that uh, took place up at Fantasy Flight on April 19th. Uh, for the last three games, you had been uh, watching me uh, play through and kind of muddle through some games. Um, I unfortunately had uh, some business that I had to attend to elsewhere and I had to drop. Uh, so I was able to talk to the tournament organizers and uh, the two gentlemen who were uh, going to play for the championship match that night and they both agreed to be on stream. So without further ado, let's uh, check out the championship match. All right, I'm excited. Me too. Uh, so we have uh, Nick on top. Nick is playing the Metal Mind, that Bulwark's uh, Barracks. And uh, Moyes is on bottom. And he is playing Citrus Maximus, the Orchard Delegate. Oof. That's, that's quite the name there. I like it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to be an Orchard Delegate, I guess you got to be named something like Citrus Maximus. For sure. Uh, looks like we're going to be doing a little bit of shuffling. A little bit of shuffling, a little bit of shuffling. Oh, the man. funnest, most tedious part of the game. Yeah. I, I am, uh, out of Moise, I am seeing the three houses that I typically like to see. You know, Shadow, Sanctum, Brobnar. Robnar for the big dudes, Shadow uh, to steal everything, and then Sanctum just to be a giant wall of, of uh, armor. Yeah, you know, and I like that combination as well. Um, the only combination I like better than that, personally, is um, Shadows, Sanctum, and uh, Untamed. Give you a little bit of that Ember Burst. Yeah. That uh, that is definitely uh, a combo to keep an eye on. Yeah, because I like to get your your steals out of your shadows and then your armor and protection. Hopefully for some of your weaker um, untamed stuff that likes to do stuff but doesn't survive. Yeah, not to mention uh, sh or, uh, Shadow Sanctum uh, has a lot of capture in it as well. So you have two two methods of controlling the board. All right, so we've got at least Untamed out of Nick. Untamed looks like Shadows... Mars. Mars. I should have known. I'm going to say, yeah. Nick, Nick is a, a, a giant uh, Mars fan. I, You know, I've noticed that uh, uh, in our meta... You know, people will have one of two opinions of Mars. Either it's amazing or it's hot garbage. <laughs> yes, very much so. It's, uh... I, I keep going back and forth. Every now and then I find a deck I really like with Mars, and then I go back to saying, never mind. I'll, I'll stay away from it again for a while. Yeah, and that's something uh, that has mirrored my experience with the house as well uh there have definitely been times where i have gotten a deck and i have been absolutely thrilled with it and then there have been times where i have gotten a deck and i have thought it was the worst pile of trash in the world there we go we had a, a spirit's way come out uh it's a great move to get rid of that giant sloth you don't want that sloth to keep out there very often absolutely the longer that sloth sticks around, the uh, the bigger the chance that your opponent is actually going to be able to get to capitalize on it. Well, and it looks like Nick did um, was able to pull off um, a giant sloth move right away. Ooh, and Ghostly Hand getting full value. Oof. Going up to check already. Check seven for the first key. Well, he is definitely adhering to one of the key principles of Keyforge. I call it the ABCs of Keyforge. And that would be? 
always be checking. <laughs> I like it. And the more times you go into check, the more likely you are to forge, I guess, right? Absolutely. You tease out those answers early and often and just force your opponent to keep stopping you. All right, Bumpsy making him lose one. Still putting him on uh, check, unfortunately. Yeah, been throwing down eight damage using Val Valdar's little special ability to do plus two to an enemy on the flank. Bit of a missed play by Moyes here on uh, the placement of that urchin. Uh, and, uh, an urchin next to a bulwark really isn't going to do a whole lot for you. But, and, and I think... Uh, go ahead. Well, but a Valder next to a, a bulwark would be a, a solid play. Yes, and I, I think what happened was the urchin was on the board and the bulwark came out and he wanted to use the bulwark with your um, Zachiel. So it was kind of, there's no other way, place to put it. Yeah. You know, when you have the, the urchin on the board already. But that urchin can now take a pounding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, the urchin can now take a pounding, uh, because it has two armor. Uh, good setup playing that Protectrix next to the urchin, so eventually when he's able to get rid of that urchin, uh, that Protectrix will fall right into place. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a solid play, and that's sometimes what I try to figure out as well, is if, if something next to either like a bulwark or a shadow self gets sniped out what can move over and take advantage as well yeah yep and that's i i feel that's uh one of the marks of of a, a more skilled player you know you're not only looking at where you are now you're also looking at where you want to be in the future Yep, and that's one thing that, that you, you do need to do a little bit of here. I mean, not a ton compared to maybe some other games out there. But you definitely want to have some sort of plan of attack to move on in the future. Yes. Yeah, this is a game that will, uh, will reward foresight, and it will also punish you for not trying to think far enough ahead. All right, lights out, bouncing those two creatures of Nyx back to his hand. Yeah, interesting choice to uh, let that urchin survive. I think I probably would have uh, ran it into the uh, Mushroom Man just so I could get that Protectrix into place. Oh, now he's got himself quite the board. Ooh, lost in the woods. Let's yeah, see what, what are we Nick returning? Gonna get rid of. Oh, definitely. Ooh, this. See now, this is a tough call. Uh, Sergeant Zachiel has protect the weak on him, so he has yep. taunt. But if he gets rid of it, he gets rid of the taunt and the extra armor, and he gives uh, Moise the ability to play uh, Sergeant Zachiel again. Yes. Yeah, no, I, th I think out of this this group, I would have chose Naughty the Thief as, as almost a no-brainer. And then I'd probably return the Bulwark. I think I'd get rid of the Spy Master. Spy Master's another good choice. Yeah. And Frankus is not a bad choice either. I mean, there, there's a lot of good choices out there. Yeah, on a board this big, it's it's difficult to isolate you know what you want to get rid of first and i think a lot of that depends on what you have in your hand and what you feel comfortable dealing with true yeah i know i definitely you know i wouldn't have put the the bumpsy or the urchin back and that's about all i know i wouldn't have put back
And bringing out that Mushroom Man and uh, Ancient Bear once again. I always uh, like to see Mushroom Man in a deck. He's uh, he's a card that scales uh, in the early game, which will allow you to take care of any weird threat that uh, shows up too early. Um, you know, if, if your opponent drops a Lord Golgotha or a, uh, a troll or a Shadow Self, uh, you're able to deal with it quickly and effectively. Uh, and still have creature left over. Well, let's. That was a that, was that, wrong. Yes, that that <laughs> was <laughs> that was assault, not hazardous. Yes. Yeah, no, that that definitely should have uh, been around. Still, the Valdar. Well, there should be a round with five damage on it. Yeah, I'm gonna reap with Bumpsy. Yep. Reap with Bumpsy. That should put Moise in check, I believe. Yep. Uh, War Drummer with Bumpsy. That's always good to see. All right. I see the anger in hand. Who's gonna Who's gonna go be angry? <laughs> Oof. Probably, yeah, Bumpsy is what I would go with. Because yeah. you want to get some, some mileage out of your crump. You don't want to throw them away right away. Yeah. And we got the Spy Master going. Spy Master into... Into urchin to okay. reap. Fair enough. Okay. That'll put him at check, I believe. Check seven. I believe you are correct. Perfect time for a bait and switch. Everybody gets four. Yes, definitely. No, it's one of those. Uh, it's one of those 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 timing timing things for there for sure. Yep. Pawn sacrificing his mushroom man. Well, it's got some pretty decent damage on it already. Mhm. Mm Spy master, good choice, good choice. Now does he soften up that crump? Oh, he takes out the war drummer. Yeah, I definitely would have probably gone after the crump, softened it up. That way, he can't get too much out of it. However, he does have a moon cursor on the table, so there next may to have... a shadow self. Yeah, so there may have been a method to the madness there. <laughs> that looks like a missed play right there. Moy's thinking that the Nerve Blast was going to take care of the Moon Cursor, forgetting that the Shadow Self was going to suck up all the damage. Selwyn the Fence coming down along with the Silver Tooth. Reaping with the Urchin. Let's see what happens with the Silver Tooth. Yep, I was going to say, but he's got himself on check. Throw a little bit more damage on that sad Shadow Self. We got going. He's gonna probably try to steal some more. No, he's he's just playing shadows. Shadows doesn't <laughs> like to steal. Never. That's crazy talk. Playing ghostly hand for the ember. Uh, that puts him at check. Plus he's gonna be able to steal one. And let's see. I I think I'd probably go after the crump here. Either the Crump or the Protectrix, one of the two. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you can uh, make a bad move there between the two. And uh, yeah, Moise is definitely going to have to deal with that, uh, deal with that Shadows lineup. 
And then say so Nick goes up to check plus three. Anna has Moyes uh, forged a key yet? I don't think so. I think he's back down to five. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what those those keys he's got going look like. There we go. <laughs> gatekeeper Perfect taking. time for a gatekeeper. Yeah. Taking Nick off of his key. I will say Shadows creatures, uh, small and numerous. But when they get on the board and they stay on the board, uh, it's, it's usually not good. No. Uh, but now we've got a situation here where we can get rid of that with um, the Moon Cursor. With no damage dealt back, so, so creatures aren't going to die. That's yep. a good, good sign to see. There we go, clearing the board. Moyes the clearing oh. check again. Now, now Moyes has, has had board control this entire time. Um, but still no keys. Uh, he does have a nice uh, combo going, though. With the the Sylwyn out there and the Gatekeeper, maybe start siphoning off some of that that Amber of of Nyx. Yeah, and this is actually this is going to be very interesting, uh, especially with that Mind Warper. Um, you know, Selwyn is the anti Mind Warper, so this I think this is just going to boil down to who can who can deal with the other's uh, answers first. Unfortunately, I think that may have been the wrong move. I think if I were him, I would have gone Sanctum and uh, taken out that Yixlo Bolter along with the Mind Warper. Well, I mean, at this point, with Shadows, he can still get rid of the Mind Warper if he runs the Urchin into it and get rid of the Elusive and then have your Super just like that. But that uh, that bolter is going to become a problem, especially with its purge ability. Although he is <laughs> he is giving him a lot of other targets, so I don't think uh, Selwyn is going to be his chief concern right now. Yeah, no, I was to say we've got. And, and I'll tell you what, with uh, Spymaster and Selwyn together, oof. So it sounds like Gatekeeper's going away, and uh, who else? I'm going to say either the Spymaster or Naughty. Yeah, I think, I think the uh, Spymaster was the right call. I agree. Yeah, no, that's that's unfortunate to see that gatekeeper go away with that much ember on it. Well, um, it's unfortunate, but it, it is absolutely to be expected. Doubly so sure. with a Selwyn on the table. No, and, and then with... Um, I had a thought process. It was going. It's gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> That happens from time to time. So I wonder what uh, Moise has for Amber Control. He's going to have to pull an answer uh, out of his backside here pretty quick, or he's going to find himself outpaced. All right, we've got a regrowth onto Moon Cursor. That is a nice creature to bring back. Uh, we'll see, I guess, if he's got any protection, though. That's that's the unfortunate part. With a Seeker Needle on the table, that Moon Cursor may not last long. All right, going Shadows, using Naughty to steal one. <laughs> Inadvertent, inadvertently showing... Uh, Showing him that uh, bottom card in his hand. <laughs> and 
Nix Nix checking out to see, make sure he's not tied up or he's not behind at this point, I guess. So that'll put him at five. Now, do you seek your needle, your urchin? You can't. Bulwark. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. I missed it. Moe's missed it. I did not. Good and choice. neither did Nick. Yeah, good choice to leave that silent dagger out there until uh, the last possible minute. Although at this point, Nick is in a position where all he has to do is grind out a couple more ember the hard way, you know, just off of cards, or even if it's uh, a couple of silver teeth that are going to hit the field and, and immediately go away. He's, he's in a very comfortable position where he doesn't have to worry about a whole lot. It looks like he had another Shadow Self to, uh, to protect not only the Moon Cursor, but now the Umbra. Ooh, nice. Oh, Pile of Skulls. Pile of skulls That's sad down. to see this late. Uh, Moyes should have forged. He's got six Ember. Yeah, and he, yeah, he started, so he should have forged a key, correct? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, let's uh, let's see how it plays out. So we are throwing some some damage down. Get rid, gotta get rid of that shadow self. Yep, there's the the rest of the damage needed to kill the shadow self. Now at this point, he can use uh, Umbra and Urchin to finish the job. Or Umbra and Bulwark to finish Moon Cursor and Umbra. I was I was confused for a second. I'm like, wait a second, what? Yes, I say words every now and then. I even understand them. Moise still has not realized that he should have forged a key. All right, gaining, gaining that one he off the Sylwyn. Still doesn't realize that he should have forged. <laughs> Am I missing something? Did did like he's got seven Ember now, right? Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Interesting, but I'll tell you what, pile of skulls with Selwyn. What a great combination. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've ever seen that. And I'm, what, I, I play a couple Pile of Skulls decks, and I'll tell you what, if my Pile of Skulls comes out late like this one did, it is a sad day. I have played against your Pile of Skulls deck, and I am happy when it comes out late. <laughs> there we go, we got a little bit of Mars lineup coming out here. All right. Looks like a little bit of a take take backsies. Squawkering the tunk, getting ready, gonna make him fight Selwyn. Yeah, I was gonna say if he fights something, throws some little damage on there, then brings out his bolter again to heal him. Well, he can't fight Selwyn. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the same. That protect the weak. Is indeed a protect the weak with a uh, Zachiel, so that makes him, I believe, a 4 2. Which is, uh, that is within tunking range. 4 2 plus the bulwark. Uh, plus the bulwark, yes, so a 4 4. So 4 4. So out of tunking range. <laughs> Just slightly. Getting rid of that protectrix. All right, so now we are forging a key. There we go. 
one turn late, but I don't think it uh, would have mattered that much. Yes, I agree. I was going to say, because there wasn't a whole lot of stealing that last round. There wasn't a whole lot of manipulation there. Yeah. So, so now we're sitting at 2-2. Two, two. Nick on three Ember for his last key, and Moise on one. There we go, going shadows, stealing yeah, nice. one. This is going to be interesting. He's going to reap with that uh, urchin. Let's see if he, uh, see who he tags. Smart yeah. play, getting rid of that bolter. Pile of skulls, doing some yeah. solid work. I uh, strongly suspect that Selwyn is going to go, go to work again. I was going to say, definitely pull it off there. Now, with uh, Pile of Skulls, it seems like every time they use, or he kills something, he's just putting it on to that creature. Um, with Pile of Skulls, you can put it on anything you want. So, Yes, that I is a mistake I see a lot of people making. Yeah, I would definitely would start stacking some on to maybe my Bulwark, where he's protected by Protect the Weak. And maybe my my troll. Mm -hmm. But then again, you don't want to stack them up too quickly. They're too high. Make them too juicy. Ooh. Nick is developing quite the Mars board. Uh, when you start seeing this much Mars out, you start getting a little worried. At least when you're on the other side. Absolutely. This much Mars and these big creatures, that's always something you got to keep an eye on. And so let's see here. Moise is at what, five now? I believe he is at five. I'll tell you what, he has made quite the comeback here. Nick, Nick got those first two keys fairly quickly. Yeah, Moise was able to uh, really develop his board and then just bring Nick to a grinding halt. Uh, I would have been interested to see how this game would have played out. Uh, had Moise been able to get that pile of skulls a little bit earlier. Yeah, that, I think that would be a whole different story. I think Nick would have only been sitting at maybe a key at this point. I think you're right. But I think now that uh, Nick has that crystal hive... Uh, I think that's going to cancel out that pile of skulls. Very much so. It's, and so at this point, you have to start start thinking, okay, well, if he's got the Crystal Hive, he's got this much Mars going, uh, got to start getting rid of some of it, one way or another. Yeah, I think his best bet right now is to just go Shadows and, and use the tools that he has. Yep. Spymaster and Selwyn working together great. I like it. That puts him on check. Yeah. Uh, that does not put him on check. The grabber jammer is uh, out there. I believe it does put him on check. Now he's on check. Yes. Well, he's sitting at eight right now. Oh, then he is definitely on check. But I'll tell you what, that grabber jammer is going to be awfully difficult to get to. Between I that chuff ape and the dominator. Well, I think he has an opportunity. Uh, as long as that urchin survives, uh, he can use the seeker needle to break the armor and then reap with the urchin. Because it has silent dagger, it's going to deal four damage. So he can take out the grabber jammer. There you go. Oof. All Nick, right, so... Nick gaining a quick four. Putting himself at check. Hopefully he's got a way to pull that last amber. Oh, no. But grabber jammer. Keep forgetting it. Grabber jammer is a great place to put silent dagger at this point. All right, 
Let's see if Moyes sees the answer to that grabber jammer, which in this case would also be uh, the answer to... Uh, Taking him off check? Yeah. Steal one pile of skulls. So that put him at... Put Nick at six, and then he's just got to kill something else. Ooh. That works as well. Well, but... it kind of works because he still has to kill something in order to capture one. Yep. There you go. As I say, kill, kill Mega Mouth, capture one. Yep. He's got the triggers. Yep. Use your. And as I say, and he can steal one with Naughty. Let's see. This isn't. This is a, a nail biter. <laughs> this is another great game. It, it is. It's like, come on, do something here. We, we want to see it. Yep. He's Breaks the armor. Tagging somebody. Breaks the armor for either one. Yep. Don't miss it. Did you have that naughty with There these. we go. Oh, I was going to say, did he forget was, the fact that he has a naughty on the board? I was getting worried there. I'm like, come on, don't miss it. <laughs> and not only that, but he also has a uh, the spy master to still use. Yeah, he can spy master into to staunch knight to to. Uh... He's got two spy two masters. Two spy masters. Oh man. Oh, this is a this beautiful deck. This deck is crazy. This this is a beautiful deck. I like this one. I'll tell you what. And there it is. Oh, looks like like Moise takes it down. That what was a great a, game. That was a great game. And that's what you wanted to see out of a championship match. Just back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, that, that I'll tell you, that deck that Moyes has is quite the deck. I like it a lot. It's got all the stuff I'm looking for in it, in a deck myself. <laughs> yeah, you Pile of skulls. I, I, I might have to. I'm like, hey, yeah, so I saw this deck. Uh, let's do some wheeling dealing here. <laughs> yeah. Give you a bag of oranges for Citrus Maximus. <laughs> That's a fair trade. <laughs> I'll give you my own Citrus Maximus here. A whole bag of oranges. But well, that was a great uh great end end to the night. Uh, do you know did Moyes take first? With I this, believe or? uh yes, I believe Moyes took first with this. Uh he went uh four and oh. Um He's a, a relatively newish player. I've seen him once or twice, um, but uh, from what I hear, he's uh, he's fun to play, which uh, is, is what you like to hear against the, uh, you know, good solid players. Yeah, no, I hopefully I'll run into him at some point. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much for sticking around and uh, giving all four videos a watch, or for giving this one a watch. Um, <laughs> If you uh, like us, you know, subscribe and uh, we'll keep you up to date with uh, the latest and greatest that's coming out of the Fantasy Flight Event Center. So, from all yeah, of us Thanks here, everybody for watching. Thank you very much.